From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show and our terrestrial affiliates across North America and digitally on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Button. You can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show. My personal handle at Dave Scott S O R as well. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's S O R Newswire. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting t- Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. Now, if you like fine art, you'll love tonight's guest. But if you're into the woo, you may even love her more. Heather Offord's original art clutches are the most authentic marriage of art and fashion in modern day. After several years as an internationally renowned artist, Heather turned her attention to fashion and she perfected the clutch. I'm going to assume that's a bag because I don't see any man out there actually carrying a clutch. Although I have bought a couple before. Not for me! Not for me. You know what? Heather is so talented and so diverse that she has literally shown her art all around the world. And she's also into remote viewing. We're going to learn if she knows about astral travel. And she really enjoys helping deal with everyday matters with consciousness. Her website, and I highly suggest you check it out, especially if you want to see some beautiful art. HeatherOffered.com. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk has us updated for tonight. Heather Offered, welcome to Spaced Out Radio for the first time. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled, too, because it's not very often we get somebody from the art world who's as talented as you are. My goodness, I did a very, very long search of your work today. And I will tell you, if I had enough money to buy it and fill my entire house, I would create my own Heather Offered Gallery. You are that awesome. Thank you. She's blushing. You You can hear it. She is blushing. I am. Yeah, I know. I know. And I could hear it. I could feel it. Heather, let's learn a little bit about you, because not only are you a talented artist, but you're also into a few things that we love to talk about around this show. When did you fall in love with art right off the bat? So um, early childhood, I was always uh, very prolifically in the creative aspects. Um. So, but I didn't actually become a professional artist until about 10 years ago. What led you down that path? Oh, let's see. It was around 2009. Recession hit. I had the blessed opportunity of losing my job. And I used that as a catalytic um, moment in my life to reassess what trajectory my life path was on. So, so yeah. I. Yeah. No, pl- so please, go I ahead. reconnect. Yeah. So I reconnected to um, what did I want to do if money didn't matter? What did I do when I was a child when I had no concept of money? And I thought, you know what? I love creating. I absolutely love being in that creative flow and creative expression. And so from there, um, I lived in a very small farm town. I didn't tell a soul what I was doing because I'd never been exposed to the arts. And um, in about a month's time, I had quickly created about 100 pieces of art. Um, Total closet painter, did not tell anyone. I used nail polish, um, shoe polish, um, extra paint left over from my house. And I created these pieces. I had no training at all. And um, after these 100 pieces were created, I thought, okay, what am I going to do with this now? I've got all this art. So I packed them in my truck and I drove to the nearest big city, which at the time was about 60,000 people. I found a very busy coffee shop and I walked inside and I said, hey, uh, your walls look kind of bare. Let me put my art up and I'll give you a percentage of whatever sells. The manager said, well, we've never done that before, but why not? So I said, great. 
So I came that evening after close, put all my hundred pieces up on the wall. And then to my surprise, I had sold out uh, within two hours of opening the next day. So Are you it kidding was, me? Uh, it was, um, I made this deal with the universe. I said, I'm going to follow the blueprint of my heart. And my job is just to do what I feel like is right inside of myself and just celebrate life. And the universe job is to reciprocate. And so I had made about $30,000 in two hours. And to me at the time, that was a tremendous amount of money. Um, And at the time, my pieces were not very expensive. Um, They were ranging between $100 and $600 per piece. No kidding. um, so that, that is, and I had never, and, you know, at this time, um, I did live in a small farm town, uh, farming community. Um, as I said, I never met an artist. I never took an art class in my life. Um, and so I was really fortunate that I was brave enough to step out on what was coming up from what, it, what was inside of me. And I gave the universe an opportunity to reciprocate. So I had a, I've had a very fortunate career in art. Um, but I did, uh, I have risked it all many times to continue building my art career. So what's that um, so like, what's that, that like, hold on, hold on. What's that like making 30 G's in like two hours? Uh, well, I, I gave the business their, their cut percentage. <laughs> I said, thank you. And I had a tremendous amount of orders, um, also commissioned orders, which I didn't even know what a commission order was. And like I said, the materials I used at the time was like kitchen sponge, like house, leftover house paint, um, cat litter, you know, whatever was around. I'd never been to an art store. I'd never been trained. But I think that that was a key to my success because rather than replicating something that somebody else created, I was creating from within me. And that gave it a sense of authenticity. And um, it, I was very much in abstract style art. So there was no rules. I could just do whatever felt natural to me. Um, so from there, I thought, okay, well, what do, what do artists do? How do they make a living? So at that time, eBay was selling art. And I thought, okay, I'm going to sell on eBay. So I tried doing that. And very quickly, within three months, I became a power seller on eBay. And I started getting knocked off by, uh, by different companies. They were just knocking me off. And they were out of the United States. And so I couldn't do anything to stop it from happening. So I thought, okay, I need to sell in person because that seems to be better. So I did some Googling and I found out about art shows and I thought, well, maybe I should try going to a big city. And this is all in 2009. So the the world is in a recession and I am having this momentum, like life change that is extremely transformative. Um, So my career is taking off. Um, I applied to some art shows in Chicago. Uh, never been to a big city in my life and I get accepted and getting into an art show. It's not as easy as it sounds because normally you have to say, I went to this school. I've been painting this many years. Here's where I've shown, but somehow time was on my side where a lot of artists had retired because of the recession. And it was the perfect timing for me just to come in and step into that. And so I remember driving to Chicago, I had a big van filled with art my first art show at the one of a kind show in Chicago. And this is all within six months of me starting. So this is a whirlwind. Um, and I'm just working night and day to the bone as much as I can. Cause I said, the, I have a window opportunity here and I have to take it. So I drive to Chicago. I've got my van of art and um, I never been to a big city and I show up for this art show. And the first day of the show, I don't sell anything. And I'm like, huh, what am I doing wrong? And at the time, my prices were 100 to $600. An artist came up to me, one of the first artists I ever met, and they said, you know what, your art's great, but no one's going to value it because it looks too cheap. The price is too cheap. And I said, you got to be kidding me. And they said, yep. And I said, you know what, you're right. So that night, After the first day, I took all my prices down and I made another big leap of faith. I added zeros. I added zeros to all my art. If it was $300, it's now $3,000. If it's $500, it's now $5,000. And that was a big step for me. Um, And guess what happened? 
I sold that again, that show. I sold that again. And so um, at that point, I thought, you know, maybe I've been doing this for about six months and I've made more wealth than I had in my entire life um, coming from a small town. And I thought, wow, maybe I should tell my family. And of course they freaked out. You know, they were like, you know, what are you doing? There is no such thing as artists. Like, and I was like, well, I think I'm going to stick with this. So I started selling in New York, Detroit, Chicago, um, Toronto. I was doing the art circuit and, um, I started getting licensing contracts. I've worked for, uh, I've had commissions with big companies. Um, my work has been used in Chevy commercials. Um, I've won international competitions, um, with Microsoft, um, for my sculptures. Um, so many, uh, contracted with Warner brothers. So I've had a very, very amazing, blessed, uh, career in art. And, and then from there, um, I turned to clutches where I started putting my art on purses to make it more wearable. Um, so I was very, very fortunate, but it it was huge risk after huge risk after huge risk. And every time, um, the universe, um, just responded to these risks that I was taking. So yeah, it was fantastic. That is absolutely an amazing story. And did you feel guided at all? Because you're also very a spiritual person. You're very in tune, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, did you feel guided that this was the path you needed to take and take those chances? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, up up until that point, um, up until that point, I had felt like, you know, I'm doing what, society's told me to do I have like this job and I'm doing I was doing management at the time and I was like I'm doing what my family wants me to do what the societal pressures are for me but am I really doing you know what's missing there was something that was missing inside of me and that missing thing was that I was living in fear of living out my truest heart's desire And when we live out our truest heart's desire, our analytical mind can't accept that because it's something that's so big and it's so vulnerable. And to try and to try and make it smaller to fit into the logical mind, it's just never going to fit. And it always has to be an act of faith. And so for me, it was just, I'm going to embrace this inner blueprint in my heart. I'm going to do this and universe, you're going to help me. This is our deal. And that's, that's been our deal. So it's worked out pretty well. You know, not not to rain on your parade or anything, but do you ever wonder why? Because you, I, I get the sense and feeling you're pretty empathic on on your own personal journey here. Do you ever do you ever wonder why when you know you look at other stories or you look at other people who have taken the big chance and the big leap of faith like you have, and they've fallen flat on your faith on their face? Pardon me, and yet here you are. You know, you took the exact same chance that they did and it panned out for you. How do you, you know, how do you go about that? Because like I said, I mean, how can I put this? I'm at a loss for words right now and I don't know why, but you know, for so many people out there, they're trying and they hear inspirational stories like you and they do exactly what you and many others say to do. Take that chance, go with it. And they just don't have it. What, what's the difference between what you did in taking that leap of faith and what most other people do? Mm-hmm. Well, so to answer this in all fairness, um, there is there's no magic wand answer for this. Um, we have to get a little bit into the understanding the construct of the contracts that we enter um, as we enter each lifetime. And so the way I like to explain this concept is um, we have a menu card in front of us before we enter a body, before we're birthed into the earth. And that menu card is a list of experiences on it. And those experiences we are filling out. The purpose of that life experience menu is to say, okay, I'm going to experience this so I can develop this virtue. I'm going to experience this so I can develop this aspect of my character. And so we all come in with different contracts and different items on our menu of experience that we're going to have in this lifetime. 
And so for me, this just happened to be part of my contract that I was going to face fear. I was going to embrace my heart. And I was going to step out on this and I was acting in faith. Now, different people, they might have different contracts. Maybe their contract is, I want to develop long suffering. Um, and so maybe their challenges are going to be more, uh, more along those lines of having to deal with failure so that they can learn encouragement, so they can learn resilience when they're in the face of disappointment. So I I think that the answer for this is really we each choose our own path of experiences with our higher self before we come down here into a physical body. And that is what, um, that is what kind of sets the, sets the obstacle course in front of you in your life as to what is going to work for you and what is going to work for another. So I don't think there's actually a magic pill that's going to say, Hey, if you do this, this is what's going to work. But what I, the closest I can get to that is saying, if you follow your heart, if you follow the blueprint of your heart, it will never steer you wrong. And I'm not saying it's going to turn into magic overnight like it did for me, but the best compass that we have is the compass of our heart. I think that's so a great everything. answer. Thank you. Yeah. Heather Offord is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Heather, let's uh, before we get into remote viewing at the bottom of the hour, because we're going to spend some time on that when we come back from break, you know, I want to learn about your spiritual side because, I mean, just listening to you speak here moments ago, it really tells that you're really connected with your own self and your own vibe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and um, I've always been very fortunate that um, since I came into this incarnation, I've always seemed to have a lot of spiritual awareness. Um, However, this was not something that I always embraced. Um, I had a lot of self-denial about my abilities um, for a very long time. And I was very fortunate that that I pushed myself into um, getting actual real testing Uh, There wasn't, you know, I think a lot of us have intuitive abilities, but we say, is that coincidence? Did did I just make that up? Am I really sensing this right? Is this just me? There's so much room for self-doubt in the intuitive self. And so I found remote viewing to be a fantastic um protocol and method to learn because it brings integrity to the process of intuitive and psychic development. So have you considered yourself psychic or intuitive your entire life, or is this something along your path you had to learn as well? Um, So I've always had um, intuitive abilities, but I have absolutely made a zillion mistakes of not listening to my intuitive self where I have rationalized away my intuition. So intuition, it is not um, something that the rational mind will agree with. You might be walking down the street and you might get a feeling about something or someone and you don't know why you're getting that feeling and your logical mind might dismiss it. And I've made mistakes like that many, many, many times where I suppressed my intuitive nature. Um, and I think that we all do that. So whenever we try and filter our intuitive abilities through our rational mind, um, it's always going to be a rant rant for us. Um, now, I've also always had a lot of premonitions since I was a child. Um, I was doing things like astral traveling. I didn't know what the term astral traveling was until I was an adult, but it was something that I um, did regularly. I'd also had experiences of time traveling since I was a child. I knew that I was a time traveler, but I did not know how to explain the mechanisms to which I was time traveling. Um, Additionally, the premonitions that I've always had, they did start in childhood. And um, so I'd always considered myself very um, prophetic in nature, where I would have dreams or day visions, and then those things would happen in real life. And I I did learn discernment along the way, that just because maybe you know something that's going to happen, or you even know something about someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should share those things. So because it can be it can be very interesting for people that maybe don't even 
uh, believe in that kind of stuff. No, and and there's a number who were, uh, don't. You know, even listening in our chat rooms or or out there wondering what the, what the heck is this lady talking about? You know, we're going to get heavy into this because I knew nothing about the time travel, and that is like one of my favorite subjects. One of my favorite. Oh subjects. yeah, and I and so, I remote viewed the heck out of it, so we can we can really dig into that. Oh, um, we're going to get I, na- we're, we're going to get nasty in that. We're going to get nasty. Oh, I I can't wait. I love time time talk. <laughs> We've got about two and a half minutes here before we have to go to break at the bottom of the hour. Heather Offord is our guest tonight. Heather, you know, going back to when you said you you started realizing this, do you remember the first intuition or intuitive session that you had that you recalled something or saw something? Or was it paranormal? Was it ghostly? Um, wow. You know, there there is there's so many countless um I've I've experienced countless paranormal events. I've seen UFOs through remote viewing. I've seen UFOs with my real eyes. I've encountered all different types of ETs. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's really amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, just like you might meet uh, somebody that's nice, you might meet someone who's not nice. So discernment is so important, so important for this. So what's the world around you when you start talking aliens? Um, so one thing that you'll learn in remote viewing, one of the first things you'll find is that everyone communicates telepathically. Um, so all alien beings, they are telepathic communicators. Um, they can speak as group consciousness or they can speak as single consciousness. And we are also communicating telepathically um, all the time with each other at a subconscious and unconscious level. Well, I'm giving you a telepathic message right now. Here it comes. <laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? Time for break. <laughs> time for break. That's exactly what I sent you. Exactly what I sent you. It's time to go for commercial. Oh, my goodness. Fine. We are on the telepathic path. We are on the, I, I'm excited about this. That just made my night, to be absolutely honest. It did. High you five. Know? High five. Oh, total high five. You made me total nervous putting me on the spot. I'm like, oh, no, can I do this? Uh, and I was like, oh, you oh, totally did it. Break. You totally <laughs> did it. All right. Heather <laughs> Offord is our guest tonight. Remote viewer, time traveler, ET contactee, resident weirdo, along with being one hell of an awesome artist. Check out her website, heatherofford.com. You will not be disappointed. More Spaced Out Radio coming up right after this. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We're 
adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptic Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptic Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey, everybody. The SOR Space Travelers is open. For just 5 bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajans.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. need that weekend supernatural fix look no further than spaced out saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com i'm stacy edwards and i'm john edwards each saturday night stacy and i are going to bring you the best in paranormal cryptids ufos you name it and we're going there it's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you so tune us in every saturday night on spaced out saturdays starting at 906 p.m pacific 1206 a.m eastern only at spacedoutradio.com We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com.
Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Welcome to all of you tuning us on in. Reminder, if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives. Go to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you and you can rock out to Bumblefoot, read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and a whole lot more. Tonight we are talking with artist Heather Offord. HeatherOfford.com. You will not be disappointed if you actually take the time to Google her art. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But this lady has another talent. She astral travels. She has ET contact. She remote views. She has paranormal experiences. She's highly intuitive. And we're going to learn about her time travels because that's what we do around here. This is what we do best on Spaced Out Radio. Heather, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Okay. I was going to get into this topic. Yes, I was going to get into the whole remote viewing thing. I have now scrapped my notes like I had any. (laughs) Like I had any, but I scrapped my notes and we're getting into this time travel thing because I love time travel. All right. I love everything about it. I want it to believe. I want to believe I want it to be real and let's get into it. Tell me your time travel story. Oh, wow. Okay. So since I was a child, um, future versions of me were coming back and visiting little me. Um, I would have teaching lessons from future me. Also, Ascended Masters would come back and they would uh, teach me very interesting things. And I kind of just assumed that everyone went to night school. Um, That's what I called it, where a teacher would show up and I would learn these esoterical things. I totally thought it was normal. Um, So, yeah. In terms of time travel, I knew I was a time traveler, and I knew that adult me was coming back to little me because I was uh, very clairvoyant, and I could pick up and see uh, aspects of myself. I didn't know how I was doing it yet, but I knew it was something that I was doing. Okay, so take us through that first experience. What happened? Go into detail. Paint us a picture, as you artists would say. Okay, um, so first experience, um, I was pretty young, probably around six or seven, and this woman came, and she was very loving, very gentle, very kind, and she was playing with me, and she was teaching me things, and I just had this intuitive knowing that this is me, that this is me grown up. And at the time, I remember thinking, like, oh, I'm so old. (laughs) But I think we all think that when we're little kids. Um, So it was really quite fascinating because even though I looked, I when I was young, I was like, this is me. There was there was a intuitive understanding that this was myself, and that this was myself um, coming back and teaching myself things. So that it was really interesting. And I thought it happened to everybody. I didn't know that that I was unique to that experience. I thought this was just something that everyone does. But then I figured out that, well, okay, other people, they don't believe in time travel. So So what what is it like seeing the future you? Uh, Pretty fantastic. (laughs) It's an upward trajectory for me, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, okay, cuz yeah. I think for a lot of people hearing this for the first time, they they're trying to figure mm-hmm. out, okay, how did you do it? How did it happen? You know, what was that emotional experience? How did you know that it was you? Um so um well, this kind of peels back into there's actually a deeper answer um to to this question. So, we can address Um, how do people access information? How do they get information? And so one of my main goals here is I want to change the way that people access information on our planet. Um, We are often born into a society and we believe that what we know is something that we've learned because it's information that we put in our brains. 
Maybe someone told us it. We learned it in school. Maybe we experienced it. But there's a different way to access information that I train people to do. And what that access is, is that there is information stored in the energy centers of our body. There is a living library of information that is stored through our chakra system um, that is part of the Akashic records, that is part of the Akashic fields. And we can access all kinds of information in the energetic aspects of ourselves rather than trying to rely on accessing information just from our mind. Now, our mind was never meant to be the leader. And if you put your mind in the lead, leading seat, you're only going to get limited information. It's only going to regurgitate that's what it knows. But if you go into yourself and you access information that is from this Akashic library that is within you, that is in your energy body, you can have access to everything. It is the keys to the universe. And that is what I love about remote viewing so much is that remote viewing brings integrity to the process of data mining. So consciousness, um, we are consciousness, but we are not singular. So I am not just Heather that is here in this location, that is here in this time right now. This time is not linear. So if you were to imagine time as a, as a piece of clay that's rolled out into a thin line and the left side is the past, the middle is right now, and the future is to the right. If you take that and you roll it into a ball, that is the truth of what time is. Time is actually happening in all moments at once. We, in the third dimensional thinking, we experience time as being linear, but time is actually happening all at once. And so scientists have proven this. They've done studies. They found that time is actually not linear. And so remote viewing, what it does is it takes your consciousness out of your current body where you think it is because identification is actually a limit. So if I think that I am only Heather and I think that I am only here in this city and this state at this time and, it, and this place, what I've done is I've confined my consciousness to this exact moment and place and time. If I drop all identifications, if I become in that meditative state that monks go into, that deep theta zone meditative state, if I go into dropping my identity and I become nowhere, nothing, nobody, I can thread the eye of the needle and I can go into the void and become nothing. And I can open all of my eyes and I can become expanded consciousness and I can become anything, anywhere, because we are all connected and we are all one. But it is only through closing your eyes and letting go of identification that we can actually open the eyes of the expanded consciousness of the oneness of all. And so remote viewing brings integrity to this process about how do we as people access information? How do we as people communicate with each other? And if we're communicating from the mind, and we're accessing information from the mind, we are limiting the truth of the depth of the experiences that we can actually have. When you are remote viewing, how does that differ mm -hmm. from your own personal time travel? So you can time travel with remote viewing. So what we can do is once you let go, of you, what's your, once your consciousness lets go of your identification when you're in that meditative state, we can send your consciousness to anywhere, anywhere, anytime, any place. So in remote viewing, we have um, we use traditionally an eight-digit number, and a remote viewer has this eight-digit number, and somewhere where the viewer doesn't know, the tasker has written this eight-digit number down. And they put an objective to it. The objective can say something like um, remote view, or it could say describe Mars a million years ago in the past. So the tasker writes that. 
I, as the remote viewer, am just given an eight-digit number. I have no idea anything about what the objective actually is. I'm just given this eight-digit number. So we call that viewer blind. So that means the viewer is completely blind to what they are viewing. And so while I'm in this meditative state and I'm remote viewing, I'm given this, this eight-digit number. I start sensing into that eight-digit number with my senses. What am I seeing in my mind's eye? What am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I, what am I tasting? What, is, what do I touch? What do I feel? What are my emotions that are coming up about this? And so our sensory information is creating sensory data that comes in rather than using the mind. So remote viewing doesn't actually use, it puts the mind in the other room. It puts the logical self in the other room. And we're actually using our sensory information to sense what that number is attached to. And so I might say, okay, I see advanced civilization. There's beings there. I've talked to them. There's a lot of warring going on. Um, they've destroyed this aspect. Or I could be like, okay, it's beautiful. It's lots of it's fertile ground. Um, and I can make contact. Um, with them. So I write up an entire report of everything that I've sent. So really, I'm using my psychic sensory skills in this. Only when I'm done with the report, I turn it into the tasker. And the tasker will then reveal to me what it was I was remote viewing. And so this is how we establish integrity in the process, is there's no information fed to you beforehand um, at all. And so time traveling, so I was time traveling um, to any location that the remote viewing tasker was sending me to. And there's also different ways that you can be taught to task yourself blindly. And so I taught all my students how to do time traveling. We can also create time loops um, where future you, where we send your consciousness to, say, for example, you wanted to know what the lottery numbers were. Okay. So, I could give one of my remote viewing students a number, um, send their consciousness to the future, and send their consciousness back to right now, and relay and give me information. And so um, we are actually not the totality of our physical bodies. We are the consciousness of all. And so I know that this can be a little bit difficult um, to try and understand if you haven't experienced it. So what remote viewing does is it expands your consciousness in ways that you never thought possible. So we can direct your consciousness to go to the future, to go to the past. Um, and it can be a shock because you're like, whoa, how am I time traveling? How am I doing this? How am I sending my consciousness here or there or there? Um, and we don't just, we have different targets that we use. We use hard targets where there is extremely hard feedback, where you 100% know what you got right and what you got wrong. And then there's soft targets, where it's a little bit open-ended, where we've done investigations on the Pyramid of Giza, for example. Um, so, so that's a little bit about remote viewing. But um, when I learned remote viewing, um, it really uh, blew my mind because I was in a lot of denial about my natural uh, abilities. And what remote viewing did is it gave me a scientific way to test my abilities and to um, see what I was capable of. And I was capable of significantly more than I realized. And I'd also like to dispel a myth. There's no one special person that can do this. Every single person um, can remote view if they choose to develop it just like every single person is telepathic and they can develop that. And that's something that I focus on in training my students um, is developing so those sensitivities. So you're actually teaching remote viewing. Yeah. Yeah. I have um, expanded consciousness Institute where I teach remote viewing, astral travel um, and telepathy. Oh yes. Yeah. And we, and we've it, and it's fantastic. It's really important to have a community because when you learn that you're a time traveler, when you learn that you're telepathic, when you learn that you can do these insane things, that you're communicating with aliens, that you're seeing in the past, the future, you're going to need a community because you're going to go through culture shock. Um, 
and you're you're going to need people to talk to 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 share these these kind of eye opening revelations. People that are going to be supportive that are experiencing this with you. Um, and so I'd work to create a community um, where people learn remote viewing and then they can grow and remote view together. And we remote view all different kinds of things. I've remote viewed the history of the world. I've met ascended masters, Jesus, Buddha. I've remote viewed and talked to Tesla. I found my missing passport. I've been to the healing chambers in Atlantis. I've remote viewed the pyramids of Giza. I've, um, I have, we've remote viewed death. We've downloaded entire books and a single remote viewing. So information download is, again, we're stepping out of the limitation of the conscious mind and we're going into this different aspect of ourselves that can change the way that we get and access information. And to me, the, the mind, um, it, it can be extraordinarily limiting. I mean, I couldn't sit down and read an entire huge book in an hour, but I can remote view and download an entire book in an hour. Okay, I got to ask you, you remote viewed what happened in Egypt during the pyramids being built. What happened there? You can't hold out on something like that. <laughs> well, I absolutely love the Pyramid of Giza. I've remote viewed it numerous, numerous times. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. It's my favorite pyramid. Um, so I can tell you a little bit about it, if you like, um, from a remote viewer's um, I would love it. Uh, aspect. Okay. Um, so this probably won't surprise you, but the, Pisa, the, the Giza Pyramid, um, deep, deep, deep below it, there is crystals in the earth. And this is very location specific. The um, pyramids, um, it is specifically placed over this area because of the energetics. And yes, this particular pyramid does have alien involvement in its creation. So not all pyramids do. And yes, yeah, some pyramids were created with thought and they were made to look like they were created um, in, a, in a regular man-made fashion. But these we found, this one we found it was created. Um, it does have um, alien uh, aspects tied to it. So it's very fascinating. Um, there is a shaft below this pyramid that goes down. There's um, a shaft of water. There's a lot of different chemicals, or not chemicals, but metals, different types of alchemy of metals. And there's also these crystals at the bottom that are creating this energy that is from deep within the earth. It travels up through this mine shaft and goes up through the pyramid. So if you can imagine uh, something going down through the center of it. Um, Pyramids are very, very, very much related to telepathic communication. And so I'd like to tie this in with another remote viewing that I did, which was remote viewing the history of the world. And okay. this, was, this was really, really interesting to me. Um, so a very long time ago, um, our planet, it had a particular equator system and there was structures that were along that equator at that time. Those structures were taking scalar wave energy and it was dispersing the scalar wave energy across the planet in a particular way. So you have the North, North Pole and the South Pole meeting together at the equator and the waves come together and they appear to cancel each other out. And so what was actually happening is they go from the third dimension into the fourth dimension. And you can Google a little bit about this because there is some science on it. And so they had, there were structures built on the earth. Everyone was telepathic at that time. And there was advanced technology. We had unlimited energy. And there was also something linking this telepathic ability to this very, very dense type of scalar wave energy. So I was pretty fascinated by it while I was remote viewing. I had had an instance of bilocation, which means rather than just remote viewing it, you actually go there. And so I was very immersed in this remote viewing. And so what had happened during this time is there was a group of ETs. Um, they were attacking the planet. 
they had attacked the planet in the third dimension and also the fourth dimension at the same time. And what these ETs did is they knocked the planet. There was such a large explosion. They had knocked the planet off of its original axis. So the North, Sol the North and the South Poles changed. So the equator area, which is where these structures were, were no longer aligned. So there was no longer um, these buildings to basically take this energy that was along the equator and spread it out. And when these aliens came and attacked, these reptilian type of aliens attacked the planet, there was absolute chaos. And so it had disrupted the telepathic communication and it had also um, disabled the power source that they were using. And so they were using what I found out to be later the same technology that Tesla started to rediscover. And if you Google what is thought, what is emotion, it is also scalar waves. And so this is where these two things combine. And so scalar waves were made less dense because of the misalignment of the structures that were put on the planet at that time. So it was pretty interesting. Um, and as, as I kept reviewing uh, the timeline through history, then people went to symbology for communication and then language became uh, the pre predominant way. And so it was all a deviation of getting farther and farther away from our intuitive abilities. Um, so that was, it was pretty tough on the planet, um, watching all of that happen. So one of the things that I would like to see happen in the planet is when we go back to a state of having free energy, when we bring about, um, when we bring about free energy, telepathy is also going to hit a spike because it is going to peak telepathic communication and do you know what is related to that? Pyramids. So pyramids, they hold scalar wave energy. Okay. So this this is absolutely tied in together. Pyramids well, are fantastic. I, I'm going to get you to hold that thought because we are going to, you know, take a much needed break here. That was some heavy woo okay. you went into that half hour. Heavy, heavy woo. Very impressive. Very impressive. You got our audience Thank cheering you. for you now. You just made a bunch of awesome. fans. You just made a <laughs> bunch of fans. Heather Offord is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We've hit peak woo, people, and it's going to continue in hour number two. Heather's website, heatherofford.com. Check it out. She is one heck of an amazing artist as well. So you want to check out her art. We continue with Spaced Out Radio right after this. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend. Woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? 
Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines report. We are independent, and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines report. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. Hi, this is Amber Beckrud, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning Bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Take it from the top. 
For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two is underway tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates across North America and on the digital side on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. Don't forget you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obmutacent. Obmutacent is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. If you're not following us on Twitter yet, you should be at Spaced Out Radio for the show and my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. Tonight we are talking with artist Heather Offord. HeatherOfford.com is her website. And we're getting into some serious, serious woo here. Serious woo. Like we may need tinfoil by the time this hour is done. And I am looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Heather is a remote viewer. She's an astral traveler. She has ET contact. Oh, yeah. She's run the gamut. Even did a little bit of time travel. I love this lady. You should, too. Heather, welcome back to the show. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it is an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Okay, what is the difference to you between remote viewing and astral travel? Um, so as you could think of, well, you could think of remote viewing as expanding your consciousness. So you can think of your consciousness spreading out. You're becoming the target. You're becoming that place, the time, that thing. And by expanding your consciousness, you're able to merge and become one. Because it actually, everything that you view actually is an extension or aspect of you. And so all remote viewing happens inside. And for astral travel, you can see astral travel is your astral body is leaving your physical body. So... There's similarities, but there's also some subtle differences. All right. So when you are astral traveling, where do you like to go? Um, Well, since I was a kid, I loved to fly. It was one of my favorite things to do. Um, But a lot of us astral travel at night, and we don't realize it. And some of us are here taking part of a higher mission that we're here to do on this earth. And so a lot of times we're doing different things that we might not even be aware of. So what's your mission? Uh, My individual mission. Um, So my individual mission is to help lead a generation into a higher state of consciousness. Nothing small at all. (laughs) So it's going to be, it's a fun one. And so that ties in with my class. Uh, remote viewing, telepathy, um, and astral travel. Um, I don't, you know, I think that it's one thing to tell people about these experiences and um, the things that that someone can have, but it's entirely life-changing and different to train someone and then have them have those experiences for themselves. 
And so I don't want anyone to feel that they need to depend on my experience to know something. My passion is training individuals how to get accurate information, how to sense so that they can have the experiences for themselves, so they can know for themselves. And dismantling these concepts that we have in our society of having a guru of I have to go outside of myself to have an experience or I have to listen to someone else's experience. My biggest passion is I want to help train each and every one of you so that you can have your own experience and you can know for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, Before I got into remote viewing, even though I had these awesome abilities, I was in so much um, denial of myself in these aspects because it did not fit the social narrative that I was living in. I was this artist. I was, you know, I, I didn't feel that if I reached into these different areas that I would be accepted. I, I feared rejection. I feared what other people would think. And I had to conquer my fear of what other people thought. And I had to conquer my fear of what, what would I think of me if I embraced these abilities? And so what I did, um, I, I had a, a tragic experience where I'd had these premonitions about my cat was going to die and um, he was at the vet at the time. And there was like this, this, I went to the vet and I said, hey, like this thing isn't going to happen to my cat, right? And the vet assured me, no, everything's fine. And my cat died in a freak accident in the exact way that I had these premonitions about. And I was devastated. Um, I cried. I was completely devastated. And I felt so guilty. And my friends were comforting me. And they were like, well, you couldn't have known. And I said, but you know what? I did know. And so that grief was motivation for me to say, you know what, I have something here. I don't know how to control it. I've got to find some scientific testing for this so that I can either figure out if I'm crazy or if I have some abilities. And so at that time, I was living in Chicago and Northwestern University was doing the world's largest study on precognition. And I had done some testing through them and it scored really high through clairvoyance and through telepathy. And I said, holy smokes, that kind of knocked me out of my, my perspective of I have to get out of denial. This test that I did shows that I have these abilities. So this is when my heart started to open and I started to remove the self-judgment that I was carrying and the fear that I was carrying about my own identity um, and what I might be, be capable of. So this led me to remote viewing training um, I was professionally trained by John Zavanko at East Eddy Ranch, and um, I had no idea what to expect. Um, and I went in, I did training, and I trained with multiple other people, and I did fantastic. I was instant savant uh, with this, and um, I, was, I did extraordinarily well. And I went through a men's culture shop. So I was not always as open as I am now, and that is because I've had my own experiences. And I had to have my own experiences in order for my mind to open because I was too afraid to even believe what I was experiencing. I was shoving it down, and I was I was in denial in, in those aspects of myself. And so um, my my biggest heart message to everyone that's listening is, You might not believe the things that I'm saying, but I don't want you to. I want you to experience them for yourself. And I can train every single one of you how to do remote viewing. And the proof will be in your own hands. And the power will be in your own self. And you don't need to listen to what somebody else's experiences are. I'm all about self-empowerment. This is how I've developed. And this is the gift that I love to give other people is that, There is no cheating with remote viewing. It's very scientific and it will blow your mind. When I teach students this, a lot of them come in with a degree of skepticism. And when they go through my class, their minds are completely blown because they had no idea what they were capable of. And so if you trust me and you give me a chance, 
I will help you change everything that you believe about yourself and about reality. And it won't be me telling it to you. It'll be you uncovering it within you. Um, so I think that's really important to address because I think that there's a, there's a lot of people in the community that have experiences and um, there's, there's a lot of people that don't have experiences. And so for those that don't have experiences, they're in disbelief, they're in fear. And what would my family think of me if, if they knew this? What would my friends think of me? Would I still have a job? Would I get fired? There's so many layers of fear. And a lot of this is a narrative that is used to control people in our culture to keep them from waking up. And it's, um, it's a control construct that if that person has experienced other beings, well, they must be weird. Or they must be on drugs or, you know, and I'm not saying that some people are or aren't, but, it, you know, I think that if you want to know the truth for yourself, I can help you learn the truth for yourself. Um, I love watching Ancient Aliens. I think it's an awesome show. But what if I could teach you to remote view that situation? So what I do with my students is I give them hard targets first. So I give them that eight-digit number, and somewhere in my files, I have that eight-digit number written down and attached to it is an objective. Maybe it's even attached to a video. And they fill out their report, and when they're done, I show them what the feedback was. Maybe they watch the video, and they compare that to what their report was. And their eyes light up with amazement that they were able to bring that information forth. And so we do that over and over and over and over and over again until the student has established a high level of accuracy on hard targets. After the student has established accuracy, we can move them on to, to softer targets where maybe I send them to go visit some alien friends that I've made along the way. So one of my most recent or what my first experience with aliens when I had learned remote viewing was about the third remote viewing I had ever done. And I'll explain this to you. So I'm in a classroom. I've learned remote viewing. There's about 14, 15 students in there. And each student is working independently by themselves. And the teacher breaks us off to work in teams. One person is gonna write down and the other person is going to live stream whatever information they're sensing. And so I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know if I know how to do this. I'm just following the teacher's instructions. And I leave Earth. I go through space. I, I arrive um, in front of all of these little beans. They're kind of shorter. They're shorter than me. And they speak to me telepathically as a group. And they show me that they can also speak individually. And so I'm having a telepathic conversation with them. And they're showing me these tools that they made. They're showing me this giant spaceship that they made. And I'm giggling the whole time because their energy is extremely fun, extremely happy. And... Um, I feel like they're reading my mind and I'm reading their mind. So one of them says to me, I like cheese. And cheese is one of my favorite things to eat. So I start busting out laughing um, because they tell me they like cheese and I'm just cracking up and I'm like, okay, I've lost my mind. Uh, maybe I am making this whole remote viewing thing up. I was in such self doubt that maybe I just made this all up. So the girl that was writing down the report next to me is like laughing. She doesn't know what it is either. And now we have to go back into the room and uh, share with the class what remote viewing data I just got. And the class is dead silent. And nobody wants to share. And of course, I get called on to go first. And I'm like, well, I might sound like a crazy person but I think I just met like a ton of aliens and they're really funny and one of them told me they like cheese and so 
I was just dying laughing. And um, when I got the feedback for it, after the rest of the class shared, there was, um, an this was, um, we were investigating an alien. And so I don't know if you know the photographer, Peter Maxwell Flattery, but yes. um, he's a, He's a famous photographer, and um, he had taken a photo of um, an alien. Well, he had captured a video. So he said that he had thought something was getting in his fridge at night, and he set up a camera in front of his fridge, and he put a glow filter on there, and he captured an alien that was going in and out to his fridge. And I affectionately call them cheese friends because we've been friends ever since and they love cheese and I love cheese. So um, I got that feedback and, you know, watched the video of this little alien, you know, going at the fridge. Um, so it's really, really quite funny. Um, so some of the remote viewings that we do, they're on things like that where someone may have said, hey, I captured an alien on camera. And you know what, sometimes, it's a bunch of BS and someone made it up. And other times you make a cheese friend. So um, you can have those experiences too. Um, that was my, one of my uh, first remote viewing experiences with, uh, with alien beings. And it was absolutely lovely. Um, it was really quite fantastic. So, yeah, apparently they can eat third-dimensional cheese, even though they're multi-dimensional beans. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. There's so many different types of beans that, um, that we can learn from, that we can become friends with. Um, I absolutely adore cheese friends. And other times you'll be remote viewing places like Vega. Vega is one of my favorite places to remote view. And, of course, you're always sent blindly. You never know where you're actually going. But Vega is like Star Wars Canteen. It's amazing. There is so many diverse beans there. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's always a party on Vega. Um, it is so, so, so cool. I am so going. So Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, let's call go. the aliens down. Let's call the aliens down right now. And let's go. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know what, once you, you know what, the most interesting thing is you can meet beans in these other locations, and they're kind of like, oh, we don't see a lot of humans here. And then it's like, they'll, after you've made a friendship with them, they'll pop in just like, if you went on vacation and you met someone and you took their phone number, they'll pop in on you and they'll just be like, hey, how you doing? And I'll be like, oh, hey, I'm great, how are you? Um, so it's really there is a lot that we can learn from other beings and realizing and learning that we are not alone there's been a lot of beings here for a very long time um and in in order to take our place in i would say the galactic universe we need to reinstate our telepathic abilities and remote viewing ties in so beautifully with telepathic abilities when i had learned remote viewing um a girlfriend uh, had learned it also, and we, she speaks five languages, and we had done an experiment, and she says, okay, I have a remote viewing task for you, and I'm like, oh, God, again, I don't want to remote view your future husband again for you, please, <laughs> but she gives me this blind task, um, and I hear roses are red, violets are blue, I am sweet, and so are you, and I was like, okay, this is so weird, so I you know, I write down on my report what I get, and she gives me the feedback, and it was a poem. And so what we did is we developed a walkie-talkie system that was telepathic through using a remote viewing number. And so the, it was just a mechanism that helped us develop our telepathy. So it was really, really, really cool. That is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. We've got three and a half minutes here before we have to go to break. At the bottom of the hour, Heather Offord is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Which beings are you in contact with? Um, I, well, I have Pleiadian roots myself, uh, also Syrian. Um, cheese friends, which are Lyra, from Lyra. Um, feline beans. Um, there, there's really quite a lot. I've experienced grays. Um, I've experienced reptilians. Um, not all are bad. Um, again, it's like meeting a person. Some people 
you know, are a certain way and some are another. Um, so I don't really have any judgment uh, about that. But I've, I've met a, a great number of beans, um, beans that I don't even know the names for. That is incredible. A- absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, this may be personal. You don't have to answer this if you don't want to. But are you also part of the hybridization program? Um, not, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> not that I'm aware of at this time. <laughs> Have you ever been in a my lab type situation? Not that I'm aware of. Lucky, lucky. How about uh, government encounters? Um, I'll have to pass on that one. <laughs> I get that. I get that. You know, because we all have them. We all have them, some more than others, some more than others, but that's okay. That is okay. We don't have to go down that road. Do you feel that this, yes, we got about 90 seconds left. Do you feel that this contact that you have with these extraterrestrials is something that you are supposed to have or that it's just part of the journey? Um, I think that every single person can have it. Why is that? Um, we're all we're all capable of um, we're all interacting with beings without bodies at all times. Our awareness may not be tuned enough to see it, and so I can train you to um, to recognize those interactions. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, if I were to uh, want to recognize my own abilities to do this. So we got about 45 seconds. Where would I start? Um, so you would start in a class with me. So we would do a Zoom class together. Um, there'd probably be other students with you, and we would just go at it. We'd have you doing it in less than a day. It's pretty confident because, you know, I've never yeah. had anything weird happen. It's true. It's true. You know, besides the aliens and Bigfoot and ghosts and everything <laughs> else in between. You know, but we'll we'll just leave that. We'll just leave it at that. Heather, hold on here, because we're going to go to break mm-hmm. here at the bottom of the hour. Heather Offord is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Her website, heatherofford.com. I highly suggest you check it on out. And, you know, she teaches remote viewing, astral travel little bit of everything she's going to take you on the path of learning your higher self we'll get into that right next on spaced out radio Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. supernatural fix look no further than spaced out saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com i'm stacy edwards and i'm john edwards each saturday night stacy and i are going to bring you the best in paranormal cryptids ufos you name it and we're going there it's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you so tune us in every saturday night on spaced out saturdays starting at 906 p.m pacific 1206 a.m eastern only at spacedoutradio.com We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on spacedoutradio.com. 
From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com we're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio.
We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show. Want to remind you that if you've missed portions of tonight's show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. And do a little shopping, or pardon me, reading at the SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio for the show, and our personal handle, at Dave Scott SOR. Tonight we are talking with uh, uh, artist Heather Offord. She's amazing, great artist, fantastic talent, and she's into remote viewing, she's into alien contact, paranormal, you name it, she's training for it. She's got the weights, the gym. The yoga that goes all along with this. Heather, welcome back. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much for having me. You're welcome. Anyhow, I want to ask you this. Do you think that there is a tie between the spirits of, of paranormal, like ghosts and everything, and ET contact? Um, well, uh, there, there's an interesting answer to this. So there's there's multiple things. So when we think about paranormal, um, there was some remote viewing that was done around um, floating objects where people were reporting that there was paranormal activity going on and it was remote viewed and it was found, well, there wasn't any ghosts or ETs there. It was almost always a person um, who was feeling oppressed, usually a child, um, usually a child that is being oppressed by a parent or um, a woman that is going through the mid change of life. Um, there is a type of oppression and the energy was shooting out and it was expressing itself at levitating objects. And so um, there is sometimes it's something like that. Other times there is other aspects. I mean, there are a lot of beings um, that are around us and about us Um just because I like to say that, you know, when we die, we take off our coat and we do a wardrobe change. We go and we put on another coat and whatever coat we put on after that is going to be a coat that is suitable for that world or that dimension or that dimensional consciousness that we're going to go into. And so there are beings that we share space with that maybe don't have an earth suit and that's okay. Maybe they were, lived on the earth at one time. And so, um, to define ourselves um, more truthfully, I would say we're beings, and right now we are in human bodies, but there's many other different types of beings around us, and there is an awful lot of paranormal things that uh, some are explained, some are not explained. And so trying to gain a foothold in the field of the paranormal, um, I think we need hard scientific measures and we need integrity in the process to really figure out what something is. Why is this thing going on? Is it really going on? Is this a story that someone's saying? Um, so that's why I love remote viewing is we can really get to the heart and the truth of, of uh, all paranormal things going on. Mm -hmm. Do you believe though, that everybody can do this, you know, because that's the Absolutely. great debate. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. why is that? Yeah. Why do you believe that? So, um, your, so every, think of your body as a bunch of little antenna. Okay. And so your body is antenna and they're all sensing information. They're all picking up information. You could call it a gut feeling. You could call it emotions, sensing, hearing, tasting. We all have these innate senses. Every person can sense. However, when we're born, we're not taught to develop these senses. And so people that do do it, um, you know, some people have integrity with it and some people don't. But how do we know, right? So if we go to a psychic, how do we know that that psychic is telling the truth? If someone reads our aura, how do we know if they're just making up a bunch of bull crap and want $10 from us? So the thing I love about remote viewing is it brings integrity to the process. Um, we can find the truth of all things in this. Because, after all, every remote viewing that you do is blind. 
And you can do a remote viewing report multiple times and you can overlay the data and the data should be consistent if you're getting accurate results. So I think that there is a myth that is in society and that is that there's only a special few that can do this. And it's kept kind of this idea of elitism, elitism that only some people can do this because they're special. Now, yeah, there are some people that can jump on a bike and they can ride it really well. Um, they're they're going to be naturals at it. And I've identified what those things are. So, for example, if you're good at meditation and withholding thought, remote viewing is going to come easier to you. If you are not judgmental towards others and yourself, remote viewing is going to come easier to you in that aspect. And also, if you've done work on yourself to get rid of your ego, because what is your ego? It's identification. So if you if you've worked on yourself in those three things, and also creativity, if you're if you're a musician, if you're an artist, if you're a dancer, if you're good at letting energy flow through you you're going to be more natural at remote viewing. And so I found that those first three that I mentioned are hangups that I train students to get through. Get in that meditative state with no thought, remove any judgments, and get rid of the ego. Those are the three things that hold people back. Now, some people have developed themselves really well in these areas already. And so when they step into remote viewing, they just take off. They fly like a kite. They're already up there. Other people... They might be struggling because they don't meditate and they have a hard time getting the thoughts in their mind under control. And so every single person can do this, but it might be harder for some than others because they have to work on other aspects of themselves. Because as we remote view, we're also remote viewing through aspects of our personality. I got to ask you about one of your paintings, because as I've been listening to you talk, I was kind of scrolling through your artwork on your website okay, which is heatherofford.com. And you have a piece called Soulmates. Mm. Yeah. Did you mean to paint the faces in that? Because I'm looking at this and I see four faces. Very In the magnifying glass. Uh, in the magnifying glass, I see an alien right off the bat, <laughs> lower-eyed gray. And then right above that, there's a, like a face staring right at you. And then there's one looking to the left and one looking to the right. Very interesting. That's that so cool. When I paint, I go into this um, deeper meditative trance state. And I just let energy flow through me. There's no judging it. There's no inhibiting it. There's no saying that this stroke of paint has to go here or this has to go here. Um, it's a very organic process where when I go into creating, I have no intention as to what I'm going to create. I'm just allowing the paintings to basically make themselves or the sculptures to create themselves. So you've never seen the faces in there? I haven't. They are clear as day. Clear as day. And the, and the alien is clear as day. And I was creating portals in my art. Um, I've always been creating portals in my art. And we can do that through our intention. And so a lot of people don't know. Um, I had Hold done on. some remote viewing. Hold on a second here. Oh, go ahead. I just, I, just, I just zoomed in on this painting. And mm -hmm. on each side, the left and right side of it, it looks like there are reptilians staring back at you. Ah! Well, hopefully they're the, the nice ones. <laughs> the, this is actually kind of creepy in a very cool <laughs> way. In a very cool way. And, I, and you've never seen those faces before. I have it. Wow. Wow. I'm a little weirded out by this one. Weirded out. And I'm not even on drugs. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cool. <laughs> that is very, very cool. I know I have some audience questions here that I have to get to. And oh, I'd like I am, to answer them. I am trying to scroll here to, to find some of them because I know they are here. I know they are here. If you're... In, 
Yeah, because my YouTube chat only allows me to go scroll so far. So if you have any questions for Heather that you would like asked, just type them again in capital letters so I don't miss them. And uh, All right, here's a question for Big Cat, who is asking, destroy the ego, yes, but what do we do with the id? Um, we, le we let everything go. So um, to be the best remote viewer that you can be is we want to let go of everything that we can. Every shred of who you think you are, where you think you are, when you think you are. Let go of every little shred and become nothing. That's what we do in, in the meditation. We go into what we call the void. So... We go into the void, we drop all identifications. And when we do that, we can open our eyes to be everything, to be everything, everywhere, every place, every time, which is pretty massive and overwhelming if you think about it. Um, but that's, that's what we do with it. That is interesting. So getting back to your own ET contact, mm -hmm. um the relationship you have with these extraterrestrials and the different species, have they all been, you know, lifelong or have you met some along the path as well? Um, I've met some along the path as well. And there was a very large aspect of myself that was in denial about um, a lot of things. Um, and my real breakthrough came was um, after I had found the, world's largest study on precognition at Northwestern University had done some telepathy testing and clairvoyance testing that led me to the remote viewing training and the remote viewing training. Um, it really solidified that I needed to get my butt out of denial and that the, these things were real, they were happening and I could, and it was proven to me scientifically over and over again. And so I couldn't, um, I had to face the truth of, of what was happening. And so my heart really opened, my mind opened, um, and I let go of fear that was holding me back. Uh, because if we have something that challenges our idea of reality, and if you're a person that's living and believing, well, okay, there's not aliens in the world, maybe they're just angels, um, you know, but that might fit into a certain religious construct that you're holding. And so really what remote viewing does is it helps you peel away all the layers. It's not really adding on to anything. It's helping you remove all these things that you've just started to add on to yourself. Get to the truth, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of truth, deeper, deeper reality rather than perception. Understandable. Understandable. You know, uh, some questions coming in. This leads to Michael's question about your thoughts on the usage of ayahuasca or other DMT in order to get to that level of spirituality and contact. Mm -hmm. um, so my personal recommendations are, it's going to be unique and up to you. So for myself, I've never done any of that stuff. Um, I just have no interest in it personally, but I know people that have done it and that have done ayahuasca and they've had extraordinary experiences. Um, and I've had, I know people that have done it and had really bad experiences. So I really feel like, um, you know, I, I think that it's an individual choice. Um, for each person, but I do know that there happens to be certain spirits and entities that can be attached to different types of drugs that maybe you don't really want to mess with. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there is other things that I would recommend instead. If you want to get to that place, there are safer and more effective ways to do things. So number one, uh, monatomic gold ormus. That is going to create a whole brain coherence. I would absolutely recommend doing that. Um, number two, get yourself some infrared light. Why? Because if you're trying to get into that sensing zone, you, you need to charge up your cells. So infrared light. Um, number three, binaural beats and theta. Theta zone, 
theta brainwaves by neural beats. Why? Because that brings your brain into the, the coherence level that you want it to be at to clear your mind and to go into that relaxed state. Also, um, magnesium, uh, multiple B vitamins. Um, there's flower essence, such as serrato, which are helped to um, aid in intuition. Um, there's, so I've had this question come up to me a lot. Um, and other things like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with going into deprivation, so a sensory deprivation room, where there's mm-hmm. no sound, there's no light. You go in there for a few days. Um, there's no talking. There's no phone. You're just it's black, completely black, that's going to naturally raise your DMT. So I would say my recommendation is stay away from the drug stuff and do the suggestions that I gave you because they're safer and they're more sustainable. Whereas if you are going to look to drugs to try and get yourself ahead, more than likely you risk putting yourself more behind um, than going forward. Heather Offord is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Philip is asking, all the way over in the UK, Heather, how does remote viewing work for romance? What do you recommend? <laughs> um, I, well, uh, there's a lot of different ways we could answer this. Um, are you interested in remote viewing your future husband or future wife? Um, Are you interested in learning about astral sex or uh, what is, what is your curiosity? Um, So there's a lot of information um, that that can be found around that. Um, I actually sent one of my students on a remote viewing task and she was like, Oh, my future husband's here. I was like, that's hilarious. (laughs) Well, that's nice. That's nice. Mm-hmm. All right. But they can learn that in your class as well. Yeah. Yeah, they can. All right. Let's move on here. Nikki is asking, what color were the Lyrans that you know? Were they blue, green, flesh tone? So they're white. And you can see them on uh, Peter Maxwell Flattery's video. I've remote viewed a lot of his videos blindly. And he has captured some really awesome, authentic footage. So I, as a remote viewer, I will absolutely say the things I've looked at are amazing. I've seen portals. I've seen Merkabas. Um, but, yeah, definitely check him out. Little white people, little white guys. All right. Let's see what else we got for questions here. Kat is asking, where can we learn to remote view? Where can you send us? Um, you can go to um, expandedconsciousnesstraining.com, and my website is up there. And um, we can get you set up with a class. I'd love to see you guys. All right. Let's move on here. Brutus, evening Brutus, is asking, do you think Bigfoot can connect with me psychically from great distances? I thought of one in particular who is about 180 miles away last I checked. I haven't visited that area for several years. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so the cool thing about telepathy is that it doesn't matter where you are. I had a girlfriend that was in Japan, one that... Um, I was that I did some telepathy training with that speaks five languages. Uh, one of the lady languages she speaks is Russian, and she was sending me this telepathic information via remote viewing tag. And um, she was reading an article that was in Russian. And when I did the remote viewing, I had the full interpretation in English. Um, she was in Japan. I, I was in Chicago, so distance has no matter um, in terms of telepathy. It is completely instant. It is it moves at the speed of light, if not faster. So you absolutely can be communicating um, with that Bigfoot, and they do communicate telepathically as well. So you probably are talking to them. All right. 
Peanut Butter Rolls wants to know if you could name one time remote viewing has been proven. He is skeptical of this, as many people are. How do you know it works for you? Um, let's see. There is a lot of studies um, that were done after the initial release of remote viewing. So, so a little bit about the history of remote viewing was um, remote viewing, it's been around for a very long time, very, very long time. Um, but most recently in the 1970s, um, Stanford Research Institute, Russell Targ, Hale Pudoff, and an artist by the name of Ingo Swan, they had developed the remote viewing protocol. And they had developed this. It was picked up by the CIA. There was all kinds of different government agencies that used remote viewing that had then developed their own branches of remote viewing. And then in the 1990s, mid-1990s, um, the research got released to the public. It was a soft release. Um, and they didn't really want to create a lot of hype around it. So they kind of downplayed it. There was independent researching agencies that had done studies on remote viewing, and they had found that it was accurate, that it was not a pseudoscience, that it was uh, usable and accurate. And um, so there's a lot of remote viewing programs out there. Um, but one of the best ways to know whether remote viewing is real or not is you can take a class with me and I guarantee you that I will show you and that you will learn for yourself that remote viewing is real. Um, well, there you go. So, yeah. There you go. I don't think you convinced peanut butter rolls because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doesn't believe in anything. He doesn't even believe in himself when all of us do. Aww. We believe in you, peanut butter rolls. We believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you been following the whole UFO phenomena over the last couple of years? Yeah, I, I have, and I do. I am a, I am certified in um, UFOlogy, and also I have a certification in remote viewing, and also a member of how, how the hell? I want to know who gave you the certification for ufology. Uh, you can get it on the Center of Excellence. It's a it's a good course. I absolutely recommend it. It's pretty good. Who teaches that? Um, so it's an online learning, and it's called centerofexcellence.com, and they have a ufology diploma, and it's pretty cool. I mean, they cover a lot of interesting things. They cover numerous UFO sightings throughout history. Um, I found it to be pretty fascinating stuff. They go back... All right. um, Really let, let, from let, let's talk about this in just a minute here because we got to go to break okay. at the top of the hour. More Spaced Out Radio coming up with Heather Offord next. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend. Woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. 
Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio, we love a good beard and mustache. So why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do, what to do. Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning Bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. 
Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor here we go with the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight i am your host dave scott thank you so much for tuning us on in we appreciate everybody listening in on our terrestrial affiliates across north america and on the digital side on talk stream live and revolution radio We want to remind you, you can check out our archives for free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Omnicent. Omnicent is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and keeping up to date on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show and my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. For the final time tonight, let's introduce our guest, Heather Offord. Her website, heatherofford.com. Beautiful artist, extremely talented, very well versed in remote viewing, astral travel, time travel, ghosts, UFOs, aliens, and she probably speaks a little Yiddish too. We're not sure about that one, but this girl could do it all. So let's check it on out. Heather, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you speak Yiddish? Uh, no, but I, I do speak light language. <laughs> all right. What's light language? Oh, geez. Um, I, you know, you could think of it as um, speaking a language that really isn't constructed in the mind. It's more of something that comes from within. All right. Earlier in the show, you talked about premonitions. You had a lot of premonitions as a child and going forward for a lot of people who may not have experienced that. What's that like? Um, well... I think uh, it depends on the individual, how, you know, how their family maybe receives that, or there can even be religious overtones to, you know, what religion, family or culture that you're born into, how they're going to interpret that kind of information. And if you're born into a Christian family, they might be like, okay, well, she's prophetic, or they might be like, oh, that's the devil. Um, it, there, there can be fear around it, but there can also be love and acceptance. Um, my personal experience with it was, um, I didn't understand that other people didn't have that. Um, to me, I didn't know any different. Um, and I learned that sometimes sharing things were just needed to have discernment and wisdom because not everything that you see is meant to be shared and not everything that you see, you can even change. So Sometimes uh, you can see something and maybe you don't really like it and you try and change it and then you just realize you can't. Um, So premonitions are a pretty interesting thing. All right. So can you create them to happen or are they just natural? Um, For me, they just come naturally. Um, I haven't really figured out an on-off button for them, but remote viewing um, helps tremendously because if there's something that I want to know about, I can make a remote viewing task, take, throw it in my box, 
and eventually I'll get around to remote viewing it when I have, you know, no idea what it is because I have to be blind to the remote viewing. You can never remote view knowing what it is. So that does give me a construct or an outlet to be able to kind of access that. Okay, so whether it's remote viewing, astral travel, telepathy, whatever it may be, I have to ask you, how do you know, and I, and I mean this with all due respect, that it isn't just imagination, that it's actually true contact? Um, so, for example, if I gave you an eight-digit an eight digit number and I said, hey, Dave, I want you to write down on a piece of paper everything that you're sensing, right? And so you write it all down, you spend the hour, you do the report, you're in this meditative state. And then when you're done, I say, okay, pencils down. All right, you're going to give me your report and I'm going to show you what the directive was that's attached to that eight digit number. And so say, for example, I sent you to Cheese Friends and your report says, oh, there's these little white guys. They like to eat. They make stuff. They're really funny. They're short. And you're describing that, and that's what the objective is. Yeah, I mean, you definitely make contact. And then there's other ways that I could give you, you know, before I would send you there, I would probably give you a lot of hard targets to establish accuracy. So maybe I would have you watch a video of, you know, whales swimming in the ocean, and you would have to draw a picture and write a description of whales swimming in the ocean. And so I like to train students on hard targets first and then go to soft targets later. A soft target would be an alien. And so, you know, there's going to be a point in your remote viewing that your own mind is going to be blown and you're going to be like, holy crap, how did I get this? Um, and again, this eight-digit number is just something that we make up because what that number does is it serves as an arrow to point your consciousness to say, hey, Dave, go look at that thing over there. Well, your mind doesn't know what it's going to look at, but there's an arrow, uh, an invisible arrow, we'll say, that's in those eight-digit numbers. And that'll direct your consciousness to that experience. And you will get hard feedback to see where you're accurate, where you're not accurate. Did you make something up? So if your target was, to look at whales or to look at aliens, I'm going to know based on your description and you're going to know based on your description right there, the rubber meets the road. You're going to see where your accuracy lies. And you know what? It's okay if it's not perfect first, because that's why we practice so that we can do it consistently so that we can build that accuracy and we can build that inner trust and familiarity in ourselves. So, you know, how do you know what, uh, how do you know what heat feels like? When you were born, you're like, well, heat, cold, through experience. So you experienced it. Now you can identify it. You know what that feels like. You can explain it. If I put an ice cube on your hand, even if your eyes are closed, you're going to be like, well, that's some, something cold on my hand. Um, so that's what we do is we, we train people to develop the sensing abilities that are already within them. And the consistency of results will build your confidence and you're, you're going to get graded very, very, um, very hard to see where your accuracy really is. So there's really no room for confabulation. All right. A couple questions coming in for you. Lee A is asking, do you speak multiple light languages? Um, I think so, because it can sound different every single time it comes out. Absolutely. Can you give us an example? Or is it all telepathic? Um, no. So so light language, um, it can sound like very different things. Um, for those of you that are familiar with light language, I'm sure you've heard different, uh, different styles of light language. Um, there's been a lot of records about light language. It's been called many things in different cultures. Um, when I had first heard about it, because I've been doing it since I was a child, um, I had read in the Bible that it was called um, tongues of fire or speaking um, the language of angels. Um, it was only later that I learned that there was another name for it, which was called speaking light language. And so really it's um, explanation for it is, is that you're speaking the perfect will of source or you're speaking the perfect will of your higher self. 
um, and you're expressing that higher, you're expressing that in a way that language cannot contain. So the human, uh, the human language um, cannot express um, high enough. And so the light language steps in. And it's not something that happens to you. It's something that you actively participate in. So if you want to hear an example of it, um, I can choose to do it right now for those of you that are curious. Um, Let's do it. Okay, so that, that's a language. Um, you can even remote view um, light language. Sometimes I know what I'm speaking while I'm speaking it. Other times I don't. Um, you can do a remote viewing of a recording of light language. Um, so, yeah, so it's called many different things. It's called in the Bible. They talk about it as tongues of fire. They talk about it as cloven tongues. I've also had other strange experiences where I felt like I should, um, you know, pray in tongues or speak in tongues, and I would be in a crowd, and there would be somebody next to me that knew exactly what I spoke, and it was in a language I had no idea of. But um, so it's really quite interesting. So I think that there's many diverse ways that we can experience this. All right. Heather Offord is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Going back to Philip here in the UK. He's looking for dating advice. It's always works with Barry White, my friend. A nice fire, Barry White. You get it every time. He is asking, if you can't remote view knowing what it is, how does love, sex, and or romance enter into a remote view, Heather? Um, so this is a very interesting topic that I could talk about for a long time. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll try and give you some of the interesting aspects. So when you're doing a remote viewing, you have no idea. The viewer has no clue what they are remote viewing. They are. That's why this is such an awesome awesome process because all you have is that H-digit number. You have no idea what you're viewing. You're going in blind. That's it. It's like, hey, here's a number. Go do your psychic sensing training that I taught you. And you're going to come forth with a report. You totally don't know what you're attaching to, but obviously there's a trust there, right? So um, say, for example, um, if I was your captor and say we were friends and you were like, oh, I, you know, I really want to try this or do that or do that. You can, I can teach you how to make a tasking box for yourself and keep yourself blind and experience whatever it is that you want to experience. Because really remote viewing is the key that unlocks every door. What is it that you want to know? What is it that you want to experience? You can experience and do anything that you want to do through remote viewing. It, it really takes away the limitations. So you can yeah. absolutely have you can absolutely have remote viewing taskings for yourself to explore those things. Very interesting indeed. All right, let's move well, on here. Lie is asking, do you know what you were saying when you were speaking in tongue? Um, there was uh, energy transmission that was going out of my body. It was um, it was uh, creating some activations that are going to happen for some of the listeners because my body got extremely hot and I could feel it surging out of my body. So um, even though you hear me talking right now with language that your mind understands, there's also an energetic communication that's happening between us, a telepathic communication that's happening between us. Um, and yes, I also do write light language as well. Um, and I do paint light language as well. Um, so sometimes there are activations that there are different syllables and different things that are said together that can create um, an unlocking of consciousnesses. And that happens in the energetic realm. And sound is um, a wonderful conductor um, in terms of helping unlock and unblock certain energies. So that's what that was. All right, moving on here. Uh, Lie uh, has a follow-up question wondering, do you also write in light language? Yeah, I do. I do. All right, let's move on here. 
as we continue on with Heather Offord. And Fitness Girls in our YouTube chat room wants to know, have you ever seen anything from the astral or remote viewing level that is too disturbing to paint? Um, absolutely. Um, I had, I had an incident where, um, I was, so here's a, here's another ET, a short ET contact, uh, story. Um, there was, I was called to this group to help a group, um, and there was energy healing. Well, it was said, it was said to be energy healing that was going on. But um, what it really was, was um, possession. And so people were being primed for possession and being uh, clairvoyant. um, It was kind of scary to see that stuff. And I really had to keep myself in check and keep myself in neutrality and not place any judgment on those darker beings that were engaging in possession, that were doing this energy, uh, so-called energy healing um, on people, but what they were doing was disrupting their energetic fields. They were placing energetic implants to lower vibrations so that these darker entities could come closer and closer and closer into an individual um, to, to influence them. That is something I would not want to paint ever. Um, I was really glad when I did my part that I was called to do, and I was very happy to leave. So, um I don't have any judgment for those beings. The way that I see it is, is that we are all, um, the way I see it is beings that you see as light, they are maybe farther along in their evolutionary process of consciousness and they have become enlightened. And there's other beings that are maybe more dense and maybe darker. And those beings, they're on their evolutionary path. And who would I be to judge them as bad? Because just like myself, I've been, I've lived many, many, many lifetimes and I'm along on my evolutionary path of enlightenment. And so I wouldn't judge someone that is, you know, on their path. And so I had to stand in neutrality in that situation. Um, but I absolutely would not paint that. But yes, I've seen things that are, you know, not, not fun necessarily to watch because it was very sad to watch individuals that were thought they were getting an energy healing and they were actually getting primed for possession. It was very difficult to watch. Uh, but at the same time, I had to remind myself um, that um, possession happens and people have soul contracts for possessions with those uh, entities and individuals. There was fallen angelics, there was reptilians, and they were bringing in a fear vibration um, into well-intended light workers so that they could infiltrate them. And they were placing these um, these things in their uh, aura that would bring their vibration lower. Um, so possession is something that's kind of like having like an abusive boyfriend. It breaks you down slowly over time. And then those beings get real close to you and they bring you down real low. So, yeah, there's scary stuff that I've seen, but I, I try not to think about it or focus on it. And I just try not to judge it also because it's really not my place to judge what those souls contracts are. So do you believe then any type of haunting or possession is a soul contract? It absolutely is. Yeah, it a hundred percent is. So when we're filling out that menu card before we come into life and we say, I'm going to experience this, 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 and this, and this, there's a contract on there. And so there was some people that I could come and I could help get out of that situation. And I could see, cause I could tell those people had lights above their heads and there was people that, I was not to interfere with, that they were on their path and that that was what they were going to do. Frustrating? Um, No, no, not frustrating. I just had to stay in neutrality. And um, I had had some dreams, of course, some dreams preparing me for this ahead of time. Um, I had had a, what one might call a nightmare where there was a possessed man it was a demonically possessed man broke in my house and I was like trying to beat him with a rubber ax. And um, I woke up in a sweat and I was freaking out. Um, so then I, you know, I centered myself and I said, this is not the highest perspective. I need to see this through the eyes of source. Let me try this again. And I went back into it. And then 
Instead, this possessed man that was trying to break into my house, I saw him as a, something that I created. I saw him through the eyes of the creator. And I saw the bean that was attached to him. And there wasn't any fear in me then. And I walked up to this bean and the entity attached to him. And I hugged him. And I walked him into the light. And so when we're standing in our connection with source and we're standing in love, we don't need any weapons. We're protected in that, in that love field. And so I had had um, preparation training before going into dealing with this instance. We so only no, have no judgment. We only have a couple minutes left with you tonight, and I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show and and filling us in and and being a part of what we do here on a nightly basis here on Spaced Out Radio. I would like to l- l- look at uh, your courses here. How does one sign up for your courses? Where do they find more information? Um, so if you go to expandedconsciousnesstraining dot com. You'll see a bunch of courses on there. Um, the, there's a foundation course, a beginner course um, that that you can uh, that you can start with, and we'll get you remote viewing, and we'll teach you the remote viewing structure right away. And then we can just build up from there. How long does it take? Oh, you can learn it in a day. You can learn it in a day. Well, that's kind of cool. How many people are yeah. in your classes? Um, it depends. Sometimes as many as like 60, sometimes 12. So quite a bit. It's very popular. Yeah. Yeah, it can be for sure. And then we have a daily practice as well that after someone's completed the training that they know how to do the structure, they can join us every single day. We have um, training where we remote view all kinds of interesting things. Well, that is awesome. That is awesome. Heather, I want to say thank you for coming on the show. Do me a favor. Let everybody know where they can find you on social media so they can add you. Okay, no problem. Um, You can find me at, you can just uh, put in Heather Artist Offered. So Artist is the middle name. That works. Um, You can also find me on Facebook at Expanding Consciousness Training uh, remote viewing, telepathy, and astral travel. So the Facebook group is Expanding Consciousness Training, Remote Viewing, Telepathy, and Astral Travel. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Heather, for coming on Spaced Out Radio tonight. It was an absolute pleasure to introduce you to our audience and to learn all about you. It was a lot of fun. I hope you had fun (laughs) as well. I know we did, and you hit peak woo for us, so we definitely got to appreciate that from you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Coming up next, we have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Dave. We continue with Spaced Out Radio coming up right after this. If you like it hot, real hot, Then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajons.com. Need that weekend's supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacey Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacey and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. 
Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? 
At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have each and every one of you hanging on out with us tonight. We want to, you know, say thank you for tuning us in. And if you've missed most of this show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show and my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. Speaking of the news... Let's get to it, shall we? The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes a little bit odd. Yeah. This summer, for the first time, genetically modified mosquitoes could be released in the United States. Why? Oh, I guess we're about to find out. On May 1st, the company Oxitec received an experimental use permit from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to release millions of GM mosquitoes. So great, they work for General Motors. Every week over the next two years in Florida and Texas, females of these mosquito species transmit dang, chikungunya, yellow fever, and Zika virus. Are you kidding me? When these lab-bred GM males are released and mate with the wild females, their female offspring die. Continual, large-scale releases of these GM males should eventually cause a temporary collapse of a wild population. However, as vector biologists, geneticists, policy experts, and bioethicists We are concerned that the current government oversight and scientific evaluation of GM mosquitoes does not ensure their responsible deployment. Oh, here we go. This is what happens when we screw with the environment, people. All right. Remember when they put carp in the rivers because they wanted to clean up a lot of the bugs and carp eat that bugs. And now all the rivers are filled with carp and they've killed off all the native fish species. Remember that? Remember what happened when they took wolves out of Yosemite only to put them back in and see how wolves changed the entire environment there? Yeah, this is something we shouldn't be doing. Okay, recently, no group of organisms has received more attention for genetic modification than mosquitoes to yield inviable offspring or make them unsuitable for disease transmission. These strategies hold considerable potential benefits for the hundreds of millions of people impacted by by mosquito-borne diseases each year. Although the EPA approved the permit for Oxitec, state approval is still required. Well, that's good. The public forum on Oxitec's recent permit application garnered 31,174 comments opposing the release and 56, just 56, in support. The EPA considered these during their reviews. Yeah, this doesn't look good, does it? It looks like there's something wrong with this. I don't know what it is, but, you know, you should never, ever play with the devil. You know what I'm saying? You never, ever should play with the devil. That's just a little bit dangerous. A little bit dangerous. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Who am I? Who am I? I guess. Anyways, let's move on. Some American history here. The last American citizen receiving a Civil War pension 
has died in North Carolina at the age of 90. Irene Triplett, whose father fought for the Union Army between 1863 and 1865, passed away Sunday in Wilkesboro from complications following surgery. Irene suffered from the mental disabilities and therefore qualified for federal financial support as a helpless adult child of a veteran. She received a monthly check of $73.13 from the Department of Veterans Affairs, which went towards expenses for the nursing home where she lived. Her father, Mose Triplett, was 83 years old when his much younger wife, Alida, gave birth to Irene in 1930. Good for old Mose there. Good for old Mose. Yeah. Anyways, Irene grew up in poverty in the Appalachians of North Carolina and never learned to read or write. She became hooked on tobacco at the age of seven and left school in the sixth grade. In an interview with the Washington Post in 2014, she revealed she was teased by her peers about her father, who was dubbed a traitor because he had defected from the Confederate Army to the Union Army partway through the Civil War. Mose Triplett initially enlisted with North Carolina's Infantry Regiment in 1862 at just age 16. However, he fell ill while his regiment was headed to Gettysburg, and he was subsequently hospitalized in Virginia. He later met a daring escape after his regiment suffered losses during the Battle of Gettysburg, and he enlisted with the Union in 1864 at age 21. He went on to marry his first wife, Mary Watson, in 1880 before she died in 1923. Okay, so a year later, at the age of 78, He tied the knot to 28-year-old Alita Hall. They welcomed Irene in 1930. In a 2014 interview with The Record, Irene revealed that she did not discuss the Civil War with her elderly father before he died. He would never talk about it. She said, Irene has been receiving her Civil War pension since the mid-1950s. She has spent more than half a century in nursing homes due to her disability. However, in recent years, she has been visited by journalists and historians eager to hear more about her life as a daughter of a Civil War soldier. One Civil War buff told the washington post she is a part of history you're talking to somebody whose father was in the civil war which is mind-bending there are now very few americans alive with direct connection to the civil war the last civil war veteran albert wilson died in 1956 at age 109 a mexican senator was allegedly caught topless during a government video meeting last week after getting changed in front of the camera without even realizing that it was on. Yeah, the incident occurred during an official meeting on Zoom, a measure taken by the Mexican government during the coronavirus pandemic to avoid unnecessary risks of contagion. Martha Lucia Miche has now issued an apology for her mistake, blaming it on her lack of tech knowledge, according to local media. The meeting was attended by at least 15 senators from the left-wing National Regeneration Movement political party who convened with the government of the Bank of, of the governor of the Bank of Mexico and press representatives. Miche, who is 66, explained the incident in an open letter she shared online saying, "Yesterday an unfortunate incident occurred during a virtual meeting with fellow senators about the current economic situation in Mexico and strategies to confront the new normal over the coming months. In one part of the session without realizing and while the camera on my computer was on, I got chains showing my naked torso." I carried on participating in the session, and thanks to a call from Senators Alejandro Armenta Mayer and Ovidio Peralta Suarez, I realized my error. Oh, the poor thing. The senator went on to offer an apology, saying that there are certain rules of conduct which nobody is exempt from, and blamed the mishap on her not yet mastering these new forms of digital communication. Screenshots of her topless senator soon began to circulate on social media, prompting mirth and cruel comments about her appearance and physique online. She's 66. Give the lady a break. Oh, my God, people. Miche, who is also the president of the State Commission of Gender Equality, responded to these criticisms in her letter in which she said that she is not ashamed of her body. She wrote, I am Malou Miche. I am not ashamed to have shown part of my body in intimacy by accident because it is exactly the notion that a woman is just her body that has allowed and fomented the objectification of women against which I have always fought. All right. So remember the other day we told you 
the Sequin toy dinosaur that rode on SpaceX and its historic launch last weekend? Well, it's become an instant star, so much so that it's becoming increasingly hard to buy. The sparkly stowaway served as Crew Dragon's zero-gravity indicator. Since the toy Apatosaurus wasn't strapped in, it began to float once the spacecraft left Earth's gravitational pull. It was chosen by NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley, who asked their sons for help. We both have two boys who are super interested in dinosaurs, and we collected up all the dinosaurs between the two houses, and Tremor, the Apatosaurus, got the vote from the boys to make the trip into space. Behnken said after the launch, the dino was originally produced by toy maker Ty, and is a part of the company's Flippables collection in a line of sequin plushies that change colors when you pet the sequins in different directions. Ty still sells the collections on its website. They are listed for $4.99 on Ty's site, but only the dino called Tremor is sold out. Ty even notes that the, on the product that Tremor is now in space. Other sites that sell the collection are also showing that Tremor is sold out. Walmart lists the dino is out of stock. Michaels says the toy is out of stock both in stores and online. And Joanne Fabric and Crafts website says the toy is not available in both regular and medium sizes. 9 to 5 Mac editor Zach Hall was first to notice how quickly the toy was selling. The dino has led to knockoffs, of course. Like an Amazon version called SpaceX Sequin Dragon Plush Toy, which is sold by a vendor called Tupu, Tupu, and costs 20 bucks and a nearly $15 price hike from Ty's version. Well, yeah, there's the ripoff artist starting right there. Even SpaceX created a knockoff called Demo 2 Dinosaur Plush Toy, which costs 25 Oh, Elon, getting in on the action. The dino has since been removed from their site, though. And on eBay, resellers are offering the Thai version at a significant markup, although there don't appear to be many left. Bankin and Hurley have since reached the International Space Station, where they will remain for 110 days before reboarding the Crew Dragon and returning to Earth. But it's not clear whether Tremor will return with them. The zero-gravity indicator from the Crew Dragon test flight, a stuffed Earth toy named Buddy, remained on board the space station even after the spacecraft returned. Ah, oh, here's something cool. One of these things I never see, but apparently everybody else does. After sunset this Friday, the moon's full moon this month will rise above the horizon. Known as the full strawberry moon, it will pass through the outer part of the Earth's shadow. And when this happens, a penumbral lunar eclipse will occur. So part of the moon will actually appear darker, but it will be so faint, of course, Dave won't see it that I probably won't even notice it at all. Well, there you go. Just answer my own question. I'm psychic there. In fact, if you live in North America, the eclipse won't even be visible. There you go again. The strawberry moon, the first full... In other words, you know, you don't even have to pay attention to this full moon. Just stay away from the zany people out there. So the first full moon of the summer, which will peak illumination on Friday, June 5th at 3.12 p.m. Eastern, according to the Farmer's Almanac, but it won't be visible until later that night when it does light up the night sky. The best direction to look is to the southeast, of course. It will then appear full for about three days, starting Thursday morning, as per NASA, which, uh, while having a minimal effect on the appearance of the moon to the naked eye, the penumbral lunar eclipse will be visible in parts of Australia, Asia, Africa, Europe, and South America. Unfortunately, for those hoping to spot a rosy moonrise, much like April's super pink moon, which I didn't see there either, the strawberry moon's name has nothing to do with its color, so it won't be bright red. As with other full moons, its name originates from Native Americans who use the moon to track seasons. It's called the strawberry moon because the Algonquin tribes in North America viewed June's full moon as a time to gather strawberries that were ripening. Well, that's kind of cool to know. Kind of cool to know. Speaking of naked. Yeah, this is indecent exposure. This guy's not even attractive. Shocking footage shared on June 2nd shows a naked man getting beat down by numerous bystanders and George Floyd protesters in New York City for allegedly assaulting an elderly man. Police commented that they believe the man was on drugs. No kidding, he's running around naked. The brief clip on video that's gone viral 
shows the naked man darting across the intersection of Morris Avenue and East Fordham Road in the neighborhood of the Bronx. Yeah. He exchanges a few punches with a peaceful protester as he makes his way across the street before pacing back and forth along the street. So the naked man and the same protesters now engaged in another scuffle with another bystander soon coming in to throw a few extra kicks to the ding ding and a few punches to the solar plexus. The naked man flails across the ground as he attempts to both fight the pair and get away from the area because he doesn't want any scratch marks on that handsome body of his. Oh, it's terrible. Some of the photos I mean, this is terrible. Just terrible. But soon, two other men descend on him, assaulting with the pummeling. Yeah, others come to try and break up the fight, but soon Naked Man is on top of his feet, pacing towards them. People screen as Naked Man fights with one more protester. Then the video comes to a close. Police spokesperson says a 911 call was made from an emotionally disturbed individual. A 28-year-old man was transported to St. Barnabas Hospital for evaluation. I, you know, honestly, he looks like he just came out of a Rocky movie. He's all pumped up. All right, Rocco. You, you know that. All right, Rocco. All right. Next. A satellite roughly the size of a briefcase has done something previously thought the reserve of a giant space telescope by detecting a scorching hot exoplanet about 40 light years away. That makes the tiny CubeSat called Asteria, measuring just 10 by 20 by 30 centimeters and weighing more than mere 10 kilograms, now the smallest planet hunting satellite in history. After being put into orbit by astronauts on the ISS in late 2017, Asteria spent 18 months in low Earth's orbit and only in April 2020 burned up in Earth's atmosphere. Scientists lost contact with it in 2019. However, before her demise, it was able to detect 555 Cancer E, a planet about twice the size of Earth, and thought to have an interior made of a diamond. Oh, yeah. That planet needs some freedom according to the De Beers family. Yeah. Now, short for Arc Second Space Telescope Enabling Research in Astrophysics, Asteria was a technology demonstration mission by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and MIT to see if such a small telescope on a small satellite could stay extremely steadily focused on a star for long periods. Guess what? It worked. And with that, let's get to the thought of the Dave. <laughs> Thought of the Dave happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Then read your responses on the air. Why? Because we love the audience participation around here. Today's Thought of the Dave is as follows. If you knew you were going to die tomorrow, what would be your last meal today? Some interesting ones. Jeremy. Lots of pizza and ice cream. Oh, I don't blame you for that, Jeremy. I don't blame you for that at all. Thank you for the wonderful clown tonight, Marty. Scared the daylights out of me as per usual, but that's all right. Yeah, I'm not just not a fan of clowns. Not a fan of clowns. Okay, next one. Paul, I want a tomahawk steak, please. Gail, prime rib roast, medium rare, buttery mashed potatoes, fresh green beans, al almondine, and Yorkshire pudding. Well, that sounds delicious. Merle, chicken wings made four ways, Creo snails, gumbo, and a catfish po' boy. Kelly, pork, steak, and eggs, hash browns, and bannock. I would also choose to eat this hearty breakfast for dinner at Dave's table. Yeah, you, you take that and you shove it. You shove it, man. You're not eating breakfast for dinner at my, around me. Gary, I want some southern fried chicken. Karen, asking her manager what she wants. She goes, I want lots of pizza and wings. William, I would spend my last day on Earth enjoying the entire menu at Latuna here in South Town, San Antonio. James, the hearts of my enemies, raw. Steve wants kebab. Matthew wants a salad. Catherine, crab and lobster with garlic butter and asparagus and pan-fried potatoes. Oh, that's just wonderful. Scotty, 
tenderloin steak, medium rare, baked potato bread, then off to the Golden Corral, then top it off at Dairy Queen and late night at Perkins. Cable Guy Matt wants breakfast for dinner. I hope you stub your toe, Matt. John. Uh, yeah, I'm not reading that one. He has a crush on a movie star. Olaf wants coconut shrimp. Oh, those are good. Final one goes to Renee in New Zealand. Breakfast for dinner, of course, Dave. Pancakes or waffles, eggs, bacon, and hash browns. Well, I hope your execution happens at 6 a.m. Thank you to everybody participating in the Thought of the Dave today. We will do it all again tomorrow on Twitter and Facebook so you can join us. Also, thank you to Captain Shirk for the wonderful news on the SOR Newswire, which can be found on our website, the Facebook page, and to Heather Offord for coming on in and talking remote viewing, talking about her art, astral travel, aliens. We went the full peak woo gamut with her tonight. It was awesome. Heather Offord. Dot com. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone participating in our chat rooms on Spreaker, YouTube, Elgab, Revolution Radio, Facebook, the Space Travelers Club at our website, and to all the snarkers and snarkads who had a fun time managing the peak woo tonight at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. You did well, kids. You did well. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us. Because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night, Mr. Bumblefoot. We need a favor. We need you to take us home. Remember, everybody, the Wu train may be parked for the night, but we're going to fire it up tomorrow. Your seat is always available. Your ticket never expires. Come join us. We'll be waiting for you. Good night.